Getting started with C1 Ribbon, a C-sharp.net Ribbon UI control. A ribbon interface is considered to be more user-friendly than traditional menus and toolbars because it allows commands to be more easily discovered by users. In this video, we show how to get started building a ribbon UI for a .NET desktop Windows Forms application using Visual Studio 2022, .NET 8, and the Component 1 ribbon control. Begin by opening or creating a .NET 8 Windows Forms application in Visual Studio. In this tutorial, we will add the Component 1 Ribbon Control package from NuGet. Search for the c1.win.ribbon package and install it to your application. Make sure to take the latest version, regardless of which version of .NET or .NET Framework you're using. You'll see a few controls in your toolbox including C1 Ribbon, C1 Backstage View, and C1 Status Bar. For now, let's use the C1 Ribbon Control. Drag and drop it to your form. Notice it automatically docks to the top of the form, as this is the most standard design approach for Ribbon UIs. What makes the Component 1 Ribbon a great and really fun control to work with is that you can design the ribbon almost completely on the form without writing any code. Commands on the ribbon are grouped by tabs along the top and then by group panels within each tab. So you can begin by setting up the tabs and group panels you'll need. Open the arrow tag at the top to see high-level actions, such as loading a template and adding a tab. Click Add a new tab. We can change the tab header text directly on the designer. While we're at it, let's change the label on the first tab to Home. You'll notice each tab gives you one group to start. You can change the group label text directly on the design surface. Select the tab header and open the arrow tag below it to find actions to add additional groups. Select a group and open up the arrow tag below it, and you'll see an assortment of ribbon elements you can add to the group. Let's start by adding a simple button. You can effortlessly change the button label and icons from the designer. From the Change Image button, you can select the icon for each size. The ribbon supports automatic scaling of buttons to fit the available space so you may want to set both the 16x16 16 16 and 32x32 32 32 sizes to support both small and large sizes. Or you can just set the large one to enforce the large size button. In this case, we want the paste button to be larger, so we will set the 32x32 32 32 icon to the paste icon. The Component 1 Ribbon Library includes hundreds of icons you can choose from and is royalty-free. Of course, you can also add your own icons from your project. Next, let's add another button for the copy action. For this button, we will just set the 16x16 16 16 icon. Once this is added, we'll build and run the application. At runtime, users can collapse the ribbon, and you'll notice the smaller icons are used. This is the simplified ribbon. You can restrict or initialize the ribbon to be simplified by setting the Allow Simplified View and Collapsed properties. Adding buttons is easy, but what happens when a user clicks a button? For this, you'll use standard .NET event handlers. On the design form, select the button, and then over in the Properties window, select the Events tab and look for the click event. Double-click in the empty space to have Visual Studio automatically generate the event handler. Now, switch to the code view of your form, and you'll see the click event. Here, you will write your custom business logic for the button. We can add a lot more to the ribbon, including toggle buttons, drop-downs, and even galleries. To add children to elements, look for its items property, and manage items through the collection editor. Another feature of the Ribbon UI is the Quick Access Toolbar, also known as the QAT, 
a collection of buttons appearing at the top or bottom of the ribbon. Typically, you allow the end user to customize the QAT at runtime. By default, every button can be added to the QAT at runtime. You can restrict this by setting any elements can be added to QAT property to false. To display a button in the QAT initially, you can set any elements show in QAT property to true. Another feature is the C1 status bar control. This is like a mini ribbon tool strip that you can add to the bottom of the form. It works similarly to the ribbon, except it just displays a single row of buttons on the left and right sides. The next thing we'll cover in this video is the backstage view. This form-wide panel displays when the user clicks the main application button, commonly named File. This is nice if you want to mimic the Office UI for opening, saving, and printing files. But you can do whatever you want from the backstage view. When you add the C1 backstage view control to the form, it'll get added to the component tray. Connect it to the C1 ribbon control on your form. Then, you can add buttons to the left side. If you want to display items on the right side, you'll want to add a tab on the left to act as the header for child items on the right. Set the text and the icon set to determine what displays on the ribbon to activate the backstage view. Lastly in this video, we will show you how to create a complete ribbon form quickly and easily. Open your form's code behind and replace the form base class with C1 ribbon form. Then you'll see at design time and runtime, the standard Windows form is replaced with a stylized form frame that fully integrates the ribbon, status bar, and quick access toolbar. That wraps up this video on adding a ribbon UI control to your .NET Windows form application. To learn more, such as how to change the style and themes, check out our documentation and samples at developer.meshius.com component one.